Okay, constructors. So what are constructors in Java and why do you use constructors? So basically constructors are used to create an instance for a class, right? So we've actually talked earlier that whenever you use a new keyword, a new instance for the class is being created on your heap. But what exactly are you calling when you say new? You're calling nothing but the constructor for that class when you say new. Right. So say for example, you've got a class called employee, right? And you want to create an instance of this class employee. How do you do it? You say employee EMP is equal to new employee. So this is nothing but the constructor. So whenever you're saying new, you're calling the constructor of that class, right? So if you have a look at this class here, you've got two constructors here, right? So one thing, you can have a number of overloaded constructors in your class. So what do you mean by overloaded? Overloaded means having the same name, but with different arguments. So this constructor has an argument, one argument of type integer. Whereas this constructor has got two arguments. One is of type string, another of type integer. So we'll actually be talking about overloading, overriding and all this stuff later in the session. Okay. So let's just assume that these are two constructors we have in this class employee, right? And if you have a closer look, this is this looks actually very similar to general methods in your class, right? A method would also have looked the same way as you can see the constructor. So what's the difference between a method and constructor? How can you identify if a particular thing is a method or constructor based on the name? So every constructor should have the same name as the class name. So if the class name is employee, my constructor should be employee. If I have any other name, that means it's a method, it's not a constructor, okay? And one more thing, your methods can have a return type, but your constructors cannot have a return type, right? And uh, you can have any uh, access modifier for your constructors. You can have public, private, protected, default, anything, okay? All right, so why do you use constructors? What do you actually put in a constructor? So we know that constructors are used to create an instance, but what do you put in this constructor block? So basically, uh, whatever initialization you need to do, you can put it in the constructors. So say for example, I need to create a new employee, okay? Just today a new employee has joined my organization, right? So I create a new employee object for him and later in the day sometime I'll enter his details into that object, okay? So how do I actually associate this employee? How do I create an instance of this employee? I'm going to create an employee object and I'm going to pass the employee ID to that employee object, okay? And say I have assigned this new employee an employee ID of 65, I'm going to create a new employee object with the employee ID value of 65, right? There's nothing but the instance variable for the employee class. So whatever initializations we can, we, you need to do, perform, you can do that in the constructor. So you basically have access to all the instance variables in your constructor. Okay. So now let's take for example, for a moment, let's just uh, assume that these two constructors are not there. I don't have any constructors in the class. And if I say employee EMP is called to new employee, will my code work or is it going to fail? Because I don't have any constructors and I'm going, I'm calling this constructor here. So I know that if there's there, uh, I'm calling some method in my class, which doesn't exist. So it's definitely going to throw me an error, right? Because the method doesn't exist in the class at all. So is it going to be the same with constructors? No, because there's one thing about it. So if your class doesn't have any constructors defined, the compiler itself is going to put a no argument constructor in your class, which doesn't have any implementation. Right? So even though there is no constructor in this class, this statement is still not going to give an error, any error. It's still going to work and it's going to create an instance for my class. But if you have any overloaded constructor defined in your class, the JVM will not, the compiler will not put a default constructor in your class. So in this case here, if you take this example where there is no default constructor and there are two overloaded constructors, this call with no argument constructor is going to fail. I'm not, it, it's going to error out saying that there's no constructor. Okay. 
Right. So one more thing about constructors is the compiler even puts one more statement inside your constructor. So the very first statement in your constructor is either a call to this or super. Right. So basically by default, if you don't put this or super, it calls super. Okay. It calls super with no argument. So what does it mean? That means that whichever class this employee is extending from, it's going to call the constructor of that class. It's going to call the no argument constructor of that class, right? So if employee is not being extended from any other class, the super class is actually going to be the object class. So any class will definitely have a super class. And if you don't have any super class, that means the super class is object. So it's going to call the no argument constructor of the object class, right? But you can still put a different call to super or this. So you can say you can call an overloaded constructor using this, or you can still call an overloaded constructor of the super class using the super, right? So basically the first statement should in any constructor should be a call either to this or super. And if you fail to do that, it's going to throw an error, right? And if you don't put any calls to this or super in your constructor by default, the compiler is going to put a super call as a first statement in your constructor, right? Right. 